All right, guys, so I got to about 11, 30, 12 o'clock, you know, 46 hours, and I was like, I'm pretty hungry. So I said, screw it. Actually, um, I'm at 95 kilos, which was my target weight. It's been my target weight for like 20 years. And I'm back, so I, I don't have... Uh, I don't have an awful lot of uh, fat left to spare. Um, I really don't. Um, my uh, my waist to height ratio is uh, about one, and um, I haven't had my blood work done yet. But I, I'm going to go ahead and get that done here pretty quick. I said I would do it at a hundred, and I'm already, you know, uh, 12 pounds lighter than that already. 100 kilos. I'm talking kilos. Um, so I made uh, two eggs, uh, fried in butter, yum. Uh, opened up a can of uh, free range salmon. Uh, went ahead and bought a kilo of short beef ribs. I love those things, salt, pepper, garlic, just threw it in the oven. Ate about half of that, I couldn't eat more. Uh, did eat an avocado, I love avocados, just love them. Uh, what else, oh, and I wound up making a keto um, tamal. Tamale, I guess you'd call them tamales, but they're, uh, because of back formation, we say tamale in English instead of tamal, which is what they're really called in, in Spanish. And I made it with almond flour, so it had, um, it had six grams of uh, carbs in it, and uh, it was quite substantial. As a matter of fact, I ate half of that because I want to save half for my kids and let them taste it. Um, uh, when the... Um, when you make them right with corn, they even have the same consistency that they had with the almond flour. So I was really happy with that. And it's the special flavor comes from the lard and the um, and the hoja de tamal, the the corn leaf. All right, it's it's dried and and uh, then you remoisten it, and so that flavor kind of comes off on the uh, what they call masa. The, the dough, if you will. So uh, essentially what I did, I took half cup of uh, almond flour, one egg, a pinch of salt, a big pinch. Um, you should kind of overdo salt on tamales because the, the salt tends to quote unquote wash out during the cooking. Um, and a, a little bit of lard, I think I used a tablespoon for that. Uh, lard, sufficient lard, lard's part of the flavor. Uh, in the uh, salty ones, and then um, and then a little bit of baking powder. Um, although I think the egg would have done, or did I? No, shoot, no, I didn't add baking powder to, to the uh, almond flour. I did add it to the the ones I made out of corn for my kids. Um, no difference in flavor for me, man. The lard, the corn husk. That's it, the, the husk. Well, not, no, not the husk. Yeah, yeah, not the leaves. I'm sorry, it is the husk. Um, that corn husk kind of, as you cook it, infuses its flavor into the, the dough. That's what gives tamales their delicious flavor. And the filling was uh, chicharron prensado, which is, uh, it's kind of chicharron, but it's, it's stomach meat. Like, Americans will make bacon out of it, and these guys will use the fat and the meat, but they cook it, and then they press it. They put it in buckets and they put, you know, several hundred kilos to squish it down. Oh. And then you kind of cut it up into cubes, throw it into the sauce of your choice. In this case, it was a green uh, tomato sauce. Uh, they're called tomb uh, tomatillos in the north. They're called tomates everywhere else. Because um, the heat tomates are the red ones, all right? So even even in the country, they, they have different names for different things. Um, so um, I made, uh, I had about half of that um, with some Frank's. I, I think Frank's hot sauce is just like delicious on just about everything. Um, and with my egg, I'm trying to think, yeah, the egg, the salmon. So I had surf and turf, man. Um, and ate till I was uh, sufficiently stuffed. Yeah, I'm, I'm full. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, am I going to eat in another three hours? Hell no. No, I'll, I'll go to bed on this one. This, this, this is happy. I'm happy. Very happy. My friend Johnny says, I'm content. So, je suis content. Hein? Je suis content. I am very happy uh, with my stomach right now. Um, 
And um, I'll probably hit the rack, uh, 21, 2200 hours. And uh, it's great. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling better. I was feeling kind of a little, a little fuzzy. I, don't, I, don't, I can't describe it, but it's like, you know what? Let's just eat something. Uh, remember, uh, my first day of fasting, I had a very big day. I walked uh, almost six miles. Uh, help people pushing trucks here and there. I mean, um, does your energy level go down? No, but uh, maybe it was water, maybe it was a little electrolytes. I don't know. You know what? Uh, my body said, why don't you just eat something, bro? And I said, okay, bro. And then, like, I totally ate something. So, no worries. But I did, uh, I did do 48 hours. 48 hours. Um, and for autophagy's sake, again, I do plenty of the foods that, that, that you eat for autophagy as you go through your daily life. Uh, turmeric. Uh, everyone says turmeric, but there's an R in there. It's kind of like February. It should be February, right? Nah, just being picky. Um, so turmeric, uh, ginger, chocolate, but I eat 95% cacao. I mean, and I eat a square of it. I mean, it's delicious chocolate flavor. Um, is it super sweet for me? No. Is it sweet enough? Yeah. Do I mind the bitterness? Not even close. I mean, the coffee I drink, uh, I make it with uh, 60 grams of grounds to the liter. And I ground it pretty finely, fresh ground. Um, but I make it in a, I make it in a pot. Um, I'll send you, I'll, I'll link it. It's a, I call it minimalist kettle coffee because you don't need the French press. And the stuff is just delicious. And if I really wanted to make it bulletproof, I could have it right now. I'm like, mom, no, no. I had plenty of fat and I'm feeling real good. So anyway, guys, um, we went ahead and ended the fast at 48 hours. I'm good with it, man. Um, and I'll probably be doing OMAD for the rest of the week. Uh, looking forward to next week. Uh, Sunday, I get chicken wings. Yay. And like I said, I take Frank's hot sauce. Per cup, I will mount uh, 50 grams of butter into that hot sauce. So, um, you know, if the, the chicken chicken wings, I think, are the fattiest cut. And uh, so I, I eat lots of those um, when I eat chicken. And especially when I dip them in the, in the Frank's mounted with butter. Now... The original recipe, a lot of people, one to one, right? One part Frank's to one part melted butter, but they just mix it and shake it. But it, it's not the same. And I don't fry mine, so I don't use seed oils. Um, if I were to fry chicken wings, I would fry them in either tallow or lard. Um, I may do it in lard one day just to kind of see if it gives it that carnitas flavor. Oh. Um, but definitely fly, frying and, and, and vegetable oils is no, no, no. If you, if you actually look, do, do, a, do a YouTube search on how they make canola oil. If it doesn't gross you out, you have a mental problem. I'm dead serious. That is absolutely disgusting. And they don't even tell you the solvent they use, okay? Uh, trust me when it, it deals with a six ring carbon chain. And I'm not going to get into hexane <coughs> or gasoline or anything, but. Uh, um, go ahead and then and then contrast that. Look up how they make olive oil. Uh, I can tell you, they shake it out of the tree, they take the whole fruit, and they throw it into water and clean the dirt off, and then they it, it bounces down this little uh, this little hopper and goes into a place where there's two 600 kilogram granite wheels that just grind the stuff into a paste, and then they send the paste um, down to um, some kind of layered deal where the oil sticks to the railings that drips down into a centrifuge and then they just centrifuge it which will take out the obviously the particulate matter and then they just pour it into bottles I mean literally you could do it yourself just take an omelet and, and they do everything the, the whole pit the whole thing they just grind the whole mother up uh, do it yourself you can you can take an olive and if you can I mean I would pit it because the pit's pretty pretty tough but you could do it in a mocha head day and then you go ahead and um, you would have to kind of just press the oil out of that and that's what you get you get like a drop or so out of an olive all right um, but uh, if you compare the cost of that um, and the cost of say any other food olive oil is actually very cheap per calorie and it's good calories um, I mean if you were stuck and you really needed to eat something 
you know, take two or three, four tablespoons of that, put it down. That will give you plenty of calories, plenty of good calories. Uh, in fact, olive oil is anti-inflammatory. Jesus, talking for 10 minutes, sorry. But just, again, I'm real excited. Um, all this knowledge in my head, all these things I'm testing and trying. Um, so I will link uh, my kettle coffee down below. I don't think it's done by anyone. I really, it's not done by anyone. I've not seen it. Um, so I, I reckon I'm a pioneer in this. Give it a try. Uh, see if you like it. So we'll talk to you in Bye.